Hi, I'm Bodie Pendus. In today's video, we're going to build a birdhouse out of scrap wood. So let's get started. So what I've done is gone through my scrap bin. I got a little hickory. Has some oak. It actually has knot holes in it. It's a mystery wood. I think it may be something else. This is some pear wood. Got a couple pieces of walnut. So with these dados, they'll just hold this in. We'll assemble this in a vertical fashion. And we have four different species of wood for the vertical part. We have a little oak base. And then we'll come in here and use this walnut to make a little roof. So for the rooftop, we're going to have this like this to make this. So we'll have to join in between these two pieces. So we're going to use these two pieces and join them together like this. So what's the best method of joinery to use in a birdhouse? Dovetails, of course. So I set out to mark my first dovetails. Not just a set of dovetails, but my very first dovetails to ever cut. I actually had an instruction book and I had my Cat's Moses jig. Started my marking. I got out the blue tape and marked it all up and proceeded to cut dovetails. Knowing that it may not be perfect, not every dovetail is, but by golly, if you don't start, you're never going to get there. So away I went, marking and cutting as we go. The reason we all got one that's a little long, other that's right on the line. Happy with that. So I'm take off the part that I'm going to remove. So with the blue tape method, after you've scored or cut your scoring lines, you can remove the part of the tape where it's going to be waste, so you'll be left with the blue tape, which will actually be your pins or tails. So after I cut the lines with my saw, I moved on to the coping saw to remove the waste in my areas and get as much of it carved out so I do the minimal amount of chiseling. And then remove the ends with the dovetail jig because it's nice and square. All right, so I have my tails cut. And now I need to come in here and clean up to the line so i'm gonna see if i can do that to my knife scratch line so this is the back side i'm or the inside that i'm starting with first so i can practice on that side before i screw it up and get to the show face so i elected to use this piece as the tails because I can make straight cuts in it up and down because of all the burl or knots in here thinking it might be a little harder and thinking that the pin cut more delicate might need to be easier wood to work with and that's I have this straight cut over here, the straight grain for the pins. Now it's time to get the hammer and the chisel and get removing the waste. So I'm cleaning out between my tails and you can see I've got a little bloody spot there. That's because this edge on this chisel is so sharp whenever I push it against there, it cuts me. So I've tried to grind that down a little bit but that's just one of the issues. Normally I put a little Band-Aid on my finger. I just forgot to do it this time. What do you know? These turned out pretty good. That looks quite professional. So I'm ready to mark my pins. So I'm putting blue tape on here so I can mark them with the 
benefit of my marking gauge and knife so I'll know what part to take off to be able to cut. Okay, so this is the mock-up or the clamp-up marking jig I made since I didn't have anything that was a right angle other than this corner of the workbench. So I have these two little angle clamps squeezed in on this board here. And these two guys are holding the left and the right red clamp. And the this clamp here is squeezing in there and there, pinching the board to keep it from falling, to keep it square. And now I have my tails cut here. Now I'm gonna be able to mark the pins so we can get on with our dovetails. So this is just the process of using my scoring knife to cut the blue tape enough to where that can be uh, removed on the other side of it so I'll know where to cut the next lines. So I'm using my Cat's Moses dovetail jig to be able to keep the angle correct for the dovetails and it's got uh, wonderful markings for pins and tails and it has a magnetic my. feature. So I have my pin cuts here. So the wood is the waste area that I'll be taking out. And so I'm just checking for line thickness. So this one here needs a little bit scotia more. The other one looks to be all touching the line. And then we'll work on cleaning them up. So you get out the coping saw, cut out the bulk of the waste, and then you get your chisels right, and do the fine so tune. Let's see how we've done here. That one looks pretty good. This one here has got a little hump in it. This one here has got a big old chunk on the other side. But we got to take out that right there. Okay, it's together and it's pretty good. I got little small gaps across this on the bottoms and I wonder if that's because my bottoms aren't exactly smooth or because I allowed a little over on my line, which is probably the issue. So next time I'll know, make that a little bit more precise. So I'm pleased with that. It fit together pretty good on the, on the second try. Now on to cutting a few pieces of walnut into my thin strips to be able to make a little enclosure area just below the roof line. So here are my uh, thin pieces of walnut and I'm going to take these and glue them together edge to edge to be able to make a section that will later cut into a triangle to fit under the edge of the roof. Mm -hmm. After I got all my mortises cut in my base plate, I measured my tenons from the box from each of the four sides and cut those to length. So if you like that birdhouse, give us a thumbs up. If you want to see more of our project builds, hey, consider subscribing down below. And as usual, come back and see me real soon. Tweet, tweet.